look myself in the mirror and accept that if you weren't a racist, you condone what a racist did. So that's to me the same thing. It's the same thing. So I, I agree with you completely. Sounds to really make you rub and scrub. Slang barang barang bong bili bili bong. Bong bili 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 bong. I said, pass the dutchy from the left hand side. Pass the dutchy from the left hand side. It's a good bone. Good afternoon. Welcome to the show. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for the invite. I appreciate it. You, you uh, got a big show. You got a big following. So uh, God bless you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Both of you, welcome to the show. I greatly appreciate you coming on. Thank you, thank you, and good morning. The right, floor is yours. Whatever it is, it'll keep till the morning. How about we both got better things to do? Midnight blue. Time on your side, I still care. I may have died, but I got no word. Just think of me, I'll be there. Just think of me, I'll be there. There you go. Bit rusty. <laughs> you know what? I gotta, I gotta tell you. Usually, I make my guests get a little emotional if I find something that touches them. You got me this time. So, viewers, you're always telling me you got this one emotional. That got me emotional. I don't wipe my eyes. Not Since you told me you've seen some of the shows already, welcome, Johnny. Of course, you know the running joke on my show is because you're six hours ahead of me. Oh yeah. I need the lottery numbers. But what do you mean? These ones. <laughs> There you go. I love it. I'm one step ahead of you, man. Hey, folks, it's the man with the pinky ring and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad Brad Berkwood. And you're watching another episode of the Bad Brad Berkwood Show on the Ringside Report Web TV channel. Now, Hit that button, whatever corner is in, and subscribe. Leave your comments below. Love having a conversation, and I always respond to anybody that leaves a comment. If it's not ridiculous, forget about it. Well, today, she's back for the third time on the Bad Brad Berkwood Show. She's the author of Too Much and Never Enough. She's a humanitarian, even though she'll blush when she sees this opening that I said that, but she is. She's adored, and she's respected around the world. And I consider her a friend and a good person. My guest today is the one, the only, Mary L. Trump. Well, Mary, once again, welcome back to the show. It's awesome. You know, this is one of my favorite places to hang out. So it's really good to be I here. I greatly appreciate it. I want to put out something before we go into any questions. Actually, this is a conversation. It's not even an interview anymore. So... I want to thank you for something. I want to start out like this. If you remember when we met back in August, you saw my book review and I reached out to you and you hit me back and said, we got a lot to talk about. Well, I gave you a different, couple different formats and you said, Brad, you should do Zoom interviews. Well, I got to tell you, if anything out of this effing COVID was positive, it was for me, for my show to do Zoom interviews because, because of you. And I always tell people, because they always say, well, how did you start? Because you were doing them in print and you were doing them in person. I, I credit you because you said, hey, you, you should do a Zoom interview. It's opened up, I mean, literally the world. I've interviewed people in Scotland, uh, England, all over the United States, of course. And I want to thank you because you're the one that said you got to do Zoom interviews. So I, you kind of took me out of the Neanderthal. Uh, <laughs> well, not really, because I was doing it in the studio, but with COVID, I ain't doing that no more. And, it, right. and actually, I like it better like this because it's a better format. So I want to thank you for that. My pleasure. And actually, it's interesting, like, it was a really quick learning. I'd never done Zoom before in my life pre-COVID. Well, pre-book, actually, because I didn't do anything before the book, obviously. So um, I hated it at first. 
Uh, so um, even though you and I spoke fairly early on, by even by then I was like, you know what, this is this is okay. Um, this is the way to go. And there, I, I even hear um, people say that about uh, television interviews. Like it's so much better because, as you said, you can get people who live more than twenty minutes away from the studio mm -hmm. uh, to to come and talk to you. And it just provides a, a diversity of opinion and all um, geography that's really important. So I'm I'm glad uh, you took to it. Absolutely. Let's as we always start out. Let's just talk about a COVID update. How's things going around you? Uh, you know, um, I am extremely fortunate. I got my first shot on Wednesday. Yeah, it's, it's, oh. you know, it, it's, it's been a journey for us here in the Northeast. Um, so um, it's a relief. Just, it's a relief knowing that um, I know what my day of freedom is, uh, April 7th. I, I got Pfizer. So I get my next shot in three weeks and then two weeks after that. Um, it hit me though, like a ton of bricks. I, as you can hear, my voice is really scratchy. I don't know why. Um, I'm exhausted, even though this is day five. Um, couldn't get out of bed for a whole day, but I don't care. I got, I got it. It's not going to change anything because I'm still susceptible and I could still get other people sick. So I'm not going anywhere. But um, I, New York did, is doing it brilliantly. Um, I went to Aqueduct Racetrack in Queens. Mm -hmm. I got there early just in case. They took me right away. I got my shot within five minutes. I had to wait 15 to make sure, you know, you don't have a re reaction. And then I left. And it was like clockwork. They have Yankee Stadium and one other place open 24 hours a day giving people the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. It's just... Oh, wow. I really do feel like there, there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that, um, you know, if, if the states, all the states get their acts together, um, I really do think almost all of us will be vaccinated by the end of May. So, okay. Yeah. That's, that's good to hear. Yeah. Now you're working on your book. The, the title is The Reckoning, Our Nation's Trauma and Find a Way to Heal. That's the name of the book, right? Yeah. Okay. How's that going? Um, pro tip. Don't write a book about trauma while you're in the process of being actively traumatized. <laughs> okay. It's hard, honestly. It's a very hard project, um, but it's coming together. And part of the reason it's hard is because um, what I was writing a, about got vastly complicated by the post-election period because <laughs> uh, so much else happened that, you know, that isn't, necessarily directly related to the trauma that we're all going to be facing post COVID, but it is still important. You know, the fact that 74 million people voted totally against their self-interest and everybody else's, um, the big lie, uh, the insurrection and all of it plays a role in, in some ways in what I'm writing about. So it definitely got a little bit more complicated, but um, I, you know, I think people are going to find it useful. Obviously, that's my hope. Uh, so I'm plugging away, but it's pretty much all I'm going to be doing for the next couple of months. Okay. I saw you, I don't know if it was on a show or if it was in a print, but you had said, and I'm, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here because I don't want to misquote you, that you said that uh, Donald won't run in 2024, but he'll announce he'll run because he can do a grift as he's done to steal right. money from his cult. Yeah. Uh, basically, that's what you said. Um, with that said, what do you think he's going to do besides for steal money from this cult <laughs> in the next four years? What do you, what do you foresee him doing? Um, I foresee him being a defendant, which is very exciting <laughs> because uh, think about it. He's got uh, three active lawsuits going on, and um, I think the most important of those is E. Jean Carroll's defamation suit. Uh, just for those who don't know, E. Jean Carroll uh, alleges that Donald raped her in the 90s, and the statutes of limitations are up, so there's nothing she can do about that. However, he said that she was lying about it and claimed that, you know, she wasn't attractive enough for him to rape, essentially. So she's... Uh, saying that he defamed her because if it's true and she is telling the truth, she's not a liar. So um, 
discovery will include having to get his DNA. And just for the record, uh, Eugene and I have the same lawyers, mm -hmm. uh, led by the great Robbie Kaplan. And um, so I've known that since the first day I met Robbie that she was Eugene's lawyer. I the first thing I said was, "Can I help?" You know, I have some DNA <laughs> that's similar. Um, and it turns out that it would, it, I don't know the technical reasons why, but their uh, DNA experts had said that I'm just too distantly related or something. I don't remember. But anyway, um, so she's just going to have to get it directly from Donald, <laughs> which is great. Um, and I think, I think her suit is definitely the farthest along. Um, my suit, uh, you know, I also have a statute of limitations hurdle. And if I get over that, we'll know sort of, I think by May, then that case is going to go forward and he's going to be deposed. Um, and then of course, New York state is very, very serious about looking at, uh, the potential tax fraud and God knows what else has been committed. Yeah. Um, and they have the tax returns. So plus the voter fraud case in Georgia, this is going to be a very busy man, but not for the reasons that he, he would like to be. So I, I'm feeling pretty good about it, especially since the Republican Senate failed to hold him accountable yet mm -hmm. again. Yeah, and I see that your, your first cousin, uh, I, I don't want to call him, and uh, I got several nicknames for him. Jag, I just call him a jag off, uh, Donald yeah, Donnie. Jr. Donnie, just yeah, Donnie. Yeah. Donnie, yeah, Donnie D.B. Jr. Uh, I, I think they deposed him again, I think. Uh, oh, really? Something, I thought I saw a headline that they had him in court for something. And it, and it looks like your other cousin uh, that's married to uh, Jarrett, uh, they're basically like hiding because yes. their father ruined their brand. Oh, Aww. well, <laughs> you know. Aww. I, I think they, they did a really good job of doing that themselves. Yeah, that's honest. true, absolutely. Okay, I want to throw out some names to you. And whatever the first thing that comes in your head, I don't care what you say, um, but off the top of your head, Ted Cruz. <laughs> really? You had to start there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, just despicable. He, Ted Cruz, <sighs> he's the worst of the worst because it's not, you know, he's, he's really no worse a Republican than any but others, right? But he has no, he has like no um, core. Mm -hmm. This is a man who can't even defend his wife yep. or his father. Yep. I mean, you know, they're all opportunistic, but, you know, seriously, mm -hmm. he has no shame of any kind whatsoever. Right. And I don't feel bad for his wife. You know, she's married to him, so no. who knows what she's like. She's a co-signer. She's yeah, a co of course. Just like Melania is with Donald. Yeah, of but, course. You know, but, but you know what's so pathetic about him on a comeback on Cruz? Me personally, if he would have said, if he would have told his mother-in-law, his father-in-law, even if he sent his wife and said, look, take the kids to Cancun, our power is going in and out, fine. I would have said, that's, that's the father. But of that, course. But that Jagoff got an airplane, knew what he was doing. They proved that he was going there for the weekend. He got busted. He got, took all the heat. And then he's, he's just dropping them off and coming back. You stay yeah. your ass right there with your constituents because you have power to get stuff done. But that's you right. didn't care because you're a selfish son of a bitch. And that's what he is. He's arrogant and he's rotten to the core. And I, Wait, I agree and, and also Beto O'Rourke, who doesn't have that kind of power, mm -hmm. still managed. And, and, and Cortez, and who's not even a Texan, yep. raised $4 million. So, yep. I, you know, he... The other thing we need to say about Ted Cruz, and this is probably the most important thing, is that he's a traitor. Yes. So let's not forget that. Yep. And I'm, the next one is a traitor too, but I got to ask you, Josh Hawley? Josh Hawley is a traitor indeed, but he's also delusional beyond belief. Mm -hmm. And you could also say the same thing about, you know, Pence and Cruz. Like these are people who actually think that helping to an incite an armed insurrection against our government, against their government, while they are serving our government, their government, is going to make them the preferred presidential candidates for 2024. Mm -hmm. absolutely. It's just absolutely. What the, I think the, one of the best memes out there, simply because it's, it rings so true, is the meme of Josh Hawley holding up uh, the salute and somebody put a little Hitler mustache on mm -hmm. him I and a little it. swastika arm mm -hmm. guard, arm bed. That's, that's Josh Hawley. Okay. Right. I agree. Uh, Moscow Mitch McConnell. 
Um, neutered, <laughs> which is sorry. Sorry to let me choose a different word. <laughs> okay. It's your words. Um, I continue to say that Mitch McConnell is the greatest traitor to this country since Robert E. Lee, with the this exception. At least Robert E. Lee declared uh, his um, opposition from the outside. You know, yeah. he seceded and fought against us openly as our enemies. Mitch McConnell's been taking us down from within for years now, and we can never let that be forgotten. Mm -hmm. um, and he is the greatest reason um, of many, many reasons that uh, the filibuster needs to be gotten rid of immediately. Okay. And did you see the headline about his wife, Elaine Choi, who's supposedly yeah. in trouble or they were investigating and she abused her position, which I, 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 when she stood behind Donald in Charlottesville as an Asian woman and allowed him to say there were fine people on both sides, that from that point on, I, I thought she was despicable as a human being. Okay. Well, she's married to him. Again, it's his, right. It's, yeah, right? it's exactly, another co-signer. Yep. Mo Brooks from Alabama, I think. Uh, you know, I, <laughs> the only thing I know about him is that he also is an insurrectionist and a traitor. Um, but, you know, also just, I think, uh, one of the many, you know, I was going to say like the, a poster child for uh, Republicans in the House, but they're all equally bad, I think. Yeah. So, you know, um, he's just a little bit worse because... Right. He um, really was trying to overturn the results of a legitimate election and stir that crowd up too, right. and put his uh, fellow Congress people, including Republicans, mm -hmm. at risk of their lives. And and you know that can't ever be underestimated. And the pro the reason it is getting downplayed is because the Republicans whose lives were at risk are pretending that they weren't. And it's, it's disgusting. Yeah. Uh, the other, the next one is is probably the most despicable. Well, Ted Cruz is up there, but one of the. I, I'm sorry uh, for people that might be insulted by what I'm about to say. Hey, it's my words come after me. I call. It, I think she's trailer park trash. I think she's a scumbag, and she shouldn't. I, which people that voted for, her, you know, you condone this bullshit. So you know what, you own what I just said too, because. Marjorie Taylor Greene is despicable. I don't yeah. care if she disagrees with, what, what's his last name, David? What's his, from Parkland? I forget the, the oh, other name. Oh, um, I'll think of it. Okay. I don't mind if she disagrees with what he wants to have for gun laws. That's fine. You could debate that, whatever. I don't care. But you don't chase him down the street as a juvenile. Like, I've never went after Barron. I went after all the adult children of Donald right. Trump, and I've attacked people on the left that went after Barron because he's off, he's off limits. When, he, when he's grown, if he gets involved, that's a different story. He's off limits. But she chased him. That was despicable. Yep. She's a QAnon supporter. I believe she's a racist. She's, she's just trash. Yep. But when you see her, besides for you just utter probably disgust, what else do you see? <laughs> Um, she is sort of a, the current representative of what's happening to the Republican Party. Um, she, to me, represents two, two classes of people. There's the 22% of people in any society, um, and I'm going to be writing about this a little bit, who are the white supremacist, pro-fascist, anti-small-D democracy people who would literally see us in, in camps, the rest of us who, who don't agree with them in, in re-education camps or worse. She also represents this trend, which by the way, is being almost entirely enabled because of extreme gerrymandering. Mm -hmm. She's in one of the most gerrymandered districts mm -hmm. in the country. You know, it's not, an, it's not an accident that she got elected when two Democratic senators got elected because you can't gerrymander statewide elections right so um just this trend towards the worst among us this trend towards stupidity and anti-intellectualism and anti-elitism what does elitism mean if you're an elite something that means you're the best at what you do like i don't see people like this having a problem with elite athletes mm -hmm. or elite entertainers right Suddenly, it's just, you know, gov people who want to govern our country responsibly, uh, people who are educated, 
Um, so it's, this is well preceded her. I mean, she's not the start of anything. She's the sort of logical conclusion to decades of uh, Republicans convincing people to vote against their own self-interest, convincing people that being ignorant is a good thing. You know, so um, my, she, she needs to be contained along with the rest of the 22% she belongs to, you know, and I think um, that's partially what liberal democracy is for, is contain them. And what what I don't see discussed enough is that the reason people like her are in office now is because between 2016 and 2018, 100% of the federal government represented the worst among us. And it's like this disease that's metastasized and, you know, we got to do something. Okay. One more name I want to throw at you. Uh, she's she's going to be very close. I think she's going to have competitions. Be freaking frack, uh, Tweedledee and Tweedle Stupid is Lauren Boebert, <laughs> who owns a restaurant or a bar that they serve you with guns. Oh, that makes sense. And I'm a gun owner. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a gunner, but I don't want someone serving me in a restaurant with a gun on their side, so it goes off and shoots me in the foot. I think that's ridiculous. But it's it's all right to have a gun. But what do you think of her? Well, I think her restaurant also gave a lot of people dysentery or something. Oh, um, it's, this is hard to believe, but I think she's much stupider than Marjorie Taylor Greene. Really? She's a, That's saying a lot. <laughs> man. And, you know, what she represents to me is this the gun fetishism of the right, uh, which is so dangerous. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we cannot underestimate the degree to which gun culture combined with white evangelicalism uh, is, is why we're where we are. Okay. Um, she's insane. She should be, um, I'm not so sure about Marjorie Taylor Greene. I got I could see for her that it, maybe it's an act, but I'm, I'm not sure. But if it's not, she and Lauren Bubbert need a 72 hour hold. Like where are their families? Where are the people who care about? And I'm not kidding about this. I felt the no, same I'm way. Dead, about I, I agree right? with you. I agree with you, Mary. Yeah, they I need help. They, they should not be, since they are in Congress, then we need to go after them and get rid of them, uh, electorally speaking. Um, but if they weren't in Congress, they need psychiatric help. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I put a statement out on Twitter. I want to see what you, you think. And if you disagree with me, by all means, disagree with me. I said that's, I don't have a blue check yet next to my name, so I put official account because I'm not apologizing for anything I ever say on Twitter. I stand by every single word. I, there's not a tweet on there that I don't stand by. And I put out a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, I said, your uncle, if he had the opportunity, I, I compared to Eldolf Hitler. I called him the Eldolf Hitler of America. And I feel in my heart of hearts that if he had the opportunity to put the people like Liz Cheney, and that voted against him, Kinzinger, and, and the other ones that voted against him, uh, little Ben Sass. Now he's calling Ben Sass little schmuck. So uh, so original, and yeah, yeah, so original. To, right. right. I said, if he had the opportunity and could get away with it, he would put them in ovens and the media, just like Eldorf Hitler put Jews. I, I, and I and I know that's a strong statement, but I honestly believe he would do it. You think that's right? Yeah. Um. I don't, well, let me put it this way. Donald will do anything that he thinks benefits him. And when he calls out these people, as he did at CPAC, as he did many times before Twitter, bans him for life. Which is probably hurting the most. Yeah. Oh, that in the PGA taking away mm -hmm. their tournaments from his mm -hmm. clubs, which are probably going bankrupt. Um, he put a target on their backs or on their foreheads, whatever, you know, he doesn't care. If he felt that that would be, if, if he had the power, see, that's the good thing. He does not have the power anymore. But if he did, um, and he felt that that would help his cause, then I don't see anything. Like we Listen, we saw for four years, there was no bottom. People kept, you know, first it was the bullshit about becoming presidential, mm -hmm. um, but then it was, Oh, we can, this can't get any worse. Of course it can. It always does because that's who he is. Um, it's never enough. It's never, um, you know, it's, it's, it's never enough loyalty. It's never enough um, money. It's never enough power. So 
I don't know that people realize the bullet we dodged. Um, and what should really terrify people is that Biden, in terms of the Electoral College vote, which we need to do away with immediately, because it's very, one of the many reasons is mm -hmm. this. He won by a smaller margin than Hillary Clinton, even though he won by over 8 million votes mm -hmm. in the popular vote. That's terrifying. 43,000. That's terrifying. Yeah. Um, so we won't, we would not have survived another four years of Donald. We may not, we won't survive even if Biden stays president. Um, well, obviously Biden will still be president. We won't survive if, if the Senate and or House switches hands in 2022. Right, right. You know, and that's one of the really awful things about this is we can't take a break. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm exhausted. I we too. can't take a break. We no, can't let down our I, guard. I refuse we can't. to. I refuse to. We, right. Because otherwise, you know, uh, it's one thing to re realize how fragile or not yet even fully realized democracy is. It's, uh, we now have to realize that we want to keep it. We, we have to work on it 24 hours a day, seven days a week in perpetuity, basically. <laughs> right. Okay. This is what I want to do. I want to throw away everything I had in the paper right there. And we're going to do something else today. I'm going to tear it up like Nancy Pelosi did. And then do one of these. All right. So I took questions from my Twitter followers and mm -hmm. other people around the world that want to ask you questions. Sure. They're short questions, whatever. It's like when I ask my second part of my interviews, the fun questions. And I've got, uh, I'm going to read them to you. The first one is, if you could live in any country in the world, where would you live and why do you choose that place? That's from Kayla M. from Chicago, Illinois. Um, United States of America, but it would have to be New York. If you mean other than the United States of America. Wherever you want to live. If you want to live in America, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, I literally, I can't see, like New York will always be my home base, partially because I feel safe here. I feel like New York, you know, despite um, Republicans, nonsense to the contrary new york represents to me the best of this country in a lot of ways um culturally in terms of diversity new yorkers are the kindest people you're ever going to meet they're not particularly patient so it may, may not seem like that but they really are um so yeah new york okay although italy's up there too i love uh, i love me some tuscany there you go i was stationed in siganella during the, uh, uh. the uh, golf war okay Next question. What's your favorite pastime? That's from Maria C. from New Orleans, Louisiana. Um, I, it's kind of a tie. They're two very different things, but I adore the sport of tennis. I haven't played in a couple of years because of injuries and then COVID. Uh, that is something I've missed more than I could possibly tell you. So, and I love watching it too. Um, and uh, reading, although... I think after I'm done, I've had to do lots of research for this book. So after I'm done, I think I'm just going to like read murder mysteries for a while. <laughs> I think that's a question later on. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Who Actually, that's the next question. <laughs> that's funny. You, you, you're a psychic now? You're doing your hey. thing and, and you're a psychic? <laughs> okay. Who's your favorite author and what is your favorite category of books? Mel J from Miami Beach, Florida. Um, one of my favorite questions. Um, my favorite author is William Faulkner. I, uh, Toni Morrison is up there. The only reason Faulkner gets a slight advantage is because I read him first. Uh, reading The Sand and the Fury when I was a junior in high school was like life changing. Um, and my favorite category, it's uh, literary fiction, um, American, probably more British than American, um, and probably, you know, 18th, 19th century, mostly. But uh, yeah, just fiction and close second would be poetry. Okay. Next question. I love hearing you kibitz with Bad Brad on his show. <laughs> on one of your interviews, you talked about your father, Fred, was friends with a lot of Jewish people in college. I want to know if you have a favorite Jewish dish. Mazel tov, Eli A. <laughs> from, I guess, uh, from Queens. Yeah. Um, my dad was actually in Sigma Alpha Mu, which was when he joined only the only members at least at lehigh were, were jewish guys so he was the first goy 
<laughs> to join. Um, and I, you know, although I grew up in Jamaica, I went to school in Forest Hills. So all of, not all, but I'd say 80, 90% of my friends growing up were Jewish. So, and that's actually still the case. Um, so I luckily, Passover was my favorite holiday. <laughs> I was always going to Fred's house for Passover. So I grew up with all that stuff. Uh, my f favorite would have, um, it's kind of a tie, matzo ball soup and uh, round knishes, okay. round potato knishes. The problem with matzo ball soup is it's chicken broth and I'm a vegetarian and it's not quite as good with vegetable broth, I have to say. <laughs> All right, well, when Deb and I come to New York, you got to take us to a deli. You could get whatever you want. Oh, you got I it. Some matzo ball soup. Absolutely. I'm craving for it. Okay, next question. I love your catter day tweets <laughs> and have three cats named Sparky, Tony, and Louie. <laughs> How old is Lyndon and who is he named after? Marilyn T. Cincinnati, Ohio. I, one of my favorite topics, cats. I love them more than I could say. Uh, Lyndon is my daughter's middle name. Okay. So uh, we named him after her. Uh, he's six. Oh, he might be seven. He's seven now. Um, and um, very sadly, his brother died last year. Oh, I'm, I'm still not over it. So Lyndon is is the sole cat of the house. Um, although this guy still is in charge of everything. Sebastian. So, yeah. Um, so I'm actually um, moving into the city soon. Really? And once everybody's kind of acclimated, I will be getting a new kitten. Um, okay preferably a black cat because black cats don't get adopted as much as other cats and people don't treat them as well because of superstitions and stuff. So that's, that's the plan. So are you going to be the, the female version of Ernest Hemingway and have all those cats like he had in Key West? Man, if I could, it's actually one of my fantasies. Once I, the lawsuit settled and I have all of my family's money, <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to, uh, <laughs> Turn the top three floors in Trump Tower into an animal sanctuary. <laughs> oh, I love you. <laughs> Crack me up. Okay. I am the biggest Ella Fitzgerald fan. You mentioned on a show with Brad Brad that your go-to song is Lady is a Tramp. In a quiet moment while you're playing this tune, I have a visual of you dancing around in your house. Am I right? Aurora C. Pontiac, Michigan. I'm really sorry to disappoint. Well, actually, I don't think it's disappointing. No, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't dance around my house, uh, which is best for everybody. <laughs> okay. I heard that would be the song to do it to. Right, exactly, exactly. I heard you were into martial arts. What did you study? BB, St. John, Indiana. Oh, that would be me asking that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, Talk about I, martial arts. I started studying Taekwondo uh, when I was like 29. I started late, um, maybe even older than that. And uh, I have my second really black belt. Um, okay. Yeah, which I haven't trained in a while, but that's also something I'm really looking forward to getting back into because um, I think all women should practice some form of martial arts. It's remarkable what it does for your uh, just sense of confidence. Like, you know, once you, once you get it, uh, you just walk differently even. You know, okay. it's hard to explain, but... Okay. No, no, I know exactly. Boxing yeah. is, is similar yeah. to that. Yep. Okay. Have you ever thought about changing your last name? Ted J. Alexandria, Virginia. Yeah, I have. Um, but I also feel like it's my name. So they are the ones who should have to change it. That's not going to happen. I think if, if, um, if things got or get, you know, if we find out about some even more horrible things that have happened or if people actually come to their senses and realize that he's a mass murderer. Um, you know, I might have to. Uh, so like I have a name picked out and ready to go if necessary. It would be a drag, but uh, there are worse things. Okay. Do you like to cook? Nino B, Naples, Italy. All the way in Naples, uh -oh. Italy. We know he likes to cook. Do uh, you like to cook? Uh, I'm not, it's not something I'm great at. Uh, it's not really my thing. I like, I like cooking for my daughter, but, um, you know, I, I prefer, and this is something else I've missed. I love going out for a really nice dinner. Okay. And I think I'm going to do that every day at a different restaurant <laughs> until I feel like things are back to normal. So okay. like a couple of years. <laughs> there you go. All right. The last question from one of my followers is, do you take any clients in your profession? Scott T from Wilmington, North Carolina. 
Uh, no, <laughs> I don't. I, I actually, I haven't practiced in years. Um, so luckily though, the training sticks and I was able to draw on it for my last book and I'm drawing on it for this book. But I think at this point, you know, I'm, I'm better off. I think I can make more of a difference doing other things. Um, but it is a great profession to be in. Okay. And what I want to do for our last part of our conversation today is I want to give the mic to you and whatever the hell you want to talk about, even whatever it is, go for it. Wow. Um, <clears throat> well, this is something I've been thinking a lot about for maybe obvious reasons, but the first thing I want to say is that, and I, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure that the people who follow you are on the, the same page we are. Get the vaccine as soon as you can get the vaccine, please. Um, you know, it's safe. Um, you know, yeah, it's, it's knocked me a bit about, but um, it's not a big deal. It's going to mean that I, I, I can go out in the world again without fearing for my life, you know? Um, and, you know, I was eligible because I have pretty bad asthma. So whatever the reason is, get the vaccine as soon as you are allowed to. Um, the other thing, people uh, have a tendency to downplay things they're going through. And this has happened almost every time I've talked to a friend in the last few months about how they're doing. Um, they'll start to talk about how hard this or that is because of COVID. And then they'll say, but, you know, a lot of people have it worse. I have a roof over my head. You know, I'm, I'm working, whatever. And we need to stop doing that. This is hard. This is, yes, it's harder for some people than for other people. And it, it, it's always better to have resources than not to. But this has been a year of unanticipated horrors, you know, and it's not just the personal experience. It's hearing about how many people have died. You know, give yourself a break and understand too that even when you're able to be out in the world again, things aren't automatically going to go back to normal. Just give yourself time, give yourself space, ask for help, which is something else we're terrible at doing at. Um, and just think, you know, because we're going to be challenged by things that we may not even be thinking about. We're probably just like, oh, hooray, you know, I can go out to dinner, I can go to movies. Um, but it's going to be weird to be around people. Um, you know, I, although we still need to wear masks, so no matter what, still wear masks. Um, but yeah, there's going to be some social awkwardness and, and there's going to be a learning curve. Uh, plus, of course, we may not know exactly how we're going to feel when this is all over. You know, it's going to hit all of us in different ways. So just be kind to yourself, ask for help, be patient, and, you know, just don't expect too much from yourself or the world. It's going to take us all a little bit of time. Okay. I want to close with two things. Uh, first, you'll appreciate this and, and find some humor in it. You know, I'm getting, I'm able now, people are reaching out to me and I'm doing interview shows and they always reference your interview. They, they love it. They say, uh, no bullshit. They say you're the most comfortable out of what everybody with me, which I take as a, as a compliment. I, I appreciate people saying it. But it's funny because I was doing a show all the way from Japan and the guy referenced you and he caught himself because he knows that I would have corrected him. He said, Mary L. Trump. Oh, he said, Mary Trump. He said, oh no, I mean, Mary L. Trump. Cause I always think <laughs> it a point. Mary likes the L. Even though all the big guys don't do it, it's Mary L. Trump. And I laughed when the guy who was interviewing me said, oh my bad, Brad. Oh, that's <laughs> it's awesome. Mary, it's Mary L. Trump, he caught himself. <laughs> the other thing, and this is gonna be a little R-rated folks. Um, this is for some people out there. And if you got the kids watching, have put the earmuffs on or, or have them leave the room. And I'm gonna say this on record and I mean every fucking word that I'm about to say. I adore this lady. And if I hear, which I, I see sometimes, people making threats, I know social media, everybody's so brave behind the keyboard, everybody's so tough. But I'm gonna put this out there and this is not a threat because I don't do threats. If I hear of a threat or one hair on her head is ever harmed by these groups that worship her uncle and, uh, at his feet, happens to her, you got a better chance of pissing in the wind and getting less blowback than what I'm going to bring. And that's not a threat. That's a fucking promise because I can't stand bullies. 
I can't stand the people that kiss his ass because you're ridiculous. He didn't fucking get the second inauguration on March 4th, you QAnon creeps. And the Proud Boys, and, and you said CPAC earlier, I call it SPAC because it's shit pack. It's disgusting. Yeah. But I promise you this, that if there's anything that happens to her because of one of his fucking cult members out there, it's not, it's not a threat, it's a promise. I, that I don't take lightly people making threats because I've seen shit that I don't like. So that's on record, and I stand by every word that I just said. I adore her. She doesn't give herself enough credit because she, as I said, well, she'll have to watch the opening to see what I said about her. She's going to blush and probably email me. So that's not I already true. Am. It is true, <laughs> right? But it's true. I've told you that many times. I say nothing I don't mean. If I agree with you on something, I agree. If I disagree, I disagree. But I adore you, and I'm not going to tolerate anybody, and I said it, take the kids to the side that fucks with you, then they, I take it personal because it's bullshit. Go, you want to go mess with somebody, go mess with the other Trumps because this, <laughs> this is the only decent Trump in the family. Barron, Barron is, is off limits. But the rest of them, forget about it. So closing thoughts, anything else, Mary? Well, you know, Brad, I, one, of, one of the highlights of this whole bizarre <laughs> experience I've had in the last year has been has been meeting you and uh, getting to know you and one of the things that is going to be really extraordinary is finally getting to meet people in person you know it's all been like this and it's great but uh you know it's better than not having had it but being able to be in the same space and 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 toast to having survived, you know, will be extraordinary. And I just so appreciate, you know, it's weird because this has been such an isolating experience since, especially the last few months with writing this other book, um, but just because of COVID, um, that it's really easy to forget that there are people out there who, who care. So just knowing that you have my back really matters and really means a lot to me. So thank you. I really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. And I want to plug my other show because I know talking to Mary offline, she's a big Twilight Zone fan. So folks, yesterday, uh, Gord Depp, who's uh, the lead singer of The Spoon, big 80s group out of Canada, him and I launched our show, Last Stop, The Twilight Zone Show. So I'm going to get Mary to come on. A lot of people out there love The Twilight Zone. And I'm going to have you on that one time. It'll be, I'll tell you in advance, it'll be talking about your favorite episode. We'll bring you into the mix and... Uh, you know where I'm at. You, you ever need anything or anybody fucks with you? I don't want to find out secondhand. You let me know. You got it. All right. And for the viewers that don't know who that is, is he still there? Is uh, Sebastian still on your side? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. He's trying desperately to. This is Sebastian, who when we first met, I said the wrong breed. And he texted me and said, schmuck, that's not what I am. Oh, he jumped over. He's in a mood, man. He's in a mood. Well, yeah. uh, what's the, the, uh, the, you got a gecko or what is it you have, the other one? Hang on one second. Okay. Sorry. Your, what is it, a gecko? Or lizard? What is it? It's a leopard gecko, and uh, she's a rescue. <laughs> okay. okay. So, so Mary is, is Dr. Doolittle of uh, New York. So she talk to the animals. All right, friend. Hey, I adore you. Take care and be safe, and good luck with that book. All right. Thank you so much for having me back. Anytime. Love it. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Hey, folks, that's another episode of the Bad Brad Berkowitz Show in the can with my buddy, Mary L. Trump, which is a fan favorite. Everybody, when Mary L. Trump comes on, everybody wants to see it. So there you go. That's her third appearance on the show. We're going to bring her on uh, Gordon my show, Last Stop, the Twilight Zone show. We're going to bring her on that. And she'll be back in the future when her book comes out and we have stuff to catch up on. She's always welcome back on the show. All right, so again, leave your comments below. I always respond uh, back to all comments unless they're totally ridiculous. And hit that button, whatever corner it's in, and subscribe to my channel. I greatly appreciate it. Programming note again, check out Bad Brad's Thoughts, which is anything that's in my head, which is a lot all the time. I got a lot to say. It's a New Yorker in me. Forget about it. And again, check out my new show with Gord Depp, Last Stop, The Twilight Zone Show. All of this content and more is on the Ringside Report Web TV channel. All right. Double forget about it. And remember, folks, every act of kindness is a little love we leave behind. Bad. Brad. Out. <laughs>